Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Tybin here for the Ether Hub, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. As the revolution on Kaladesh heats up, the rebellious renegades finally score a decisive victory as they assault and gain control of an Ether terminal that formerly operated for the consulate. This Ether Hub is imperative for the renegades, providing them much needed resources to fuel their skyship, Heart of Kirin, and other valuable weapons in the fight against the oppressive consulate. This damaging blow isn't lost on the consulate either. They need all the ether possible in order to power head console Tezzeret's grand invention, and the renegades having any source of ether is always concerning. In order to quell this rebellion, consulate forces must retake the ether hub, but in doing so, it pits two old enemies against each other. Will cooler heads prevail, or can the fires of revenge burn through any opposition? Tezzeret, the once head judge of the Inventors Fair, has initiated emergency measures ensuring he has full power over the consulate as head consul during these trying times. Yet, even with the full host of the consulate at his back, Tezzeret still managed to lose the valuable Ether Hub. His disappointment was apparent in his behavior, something Davin Bain, his head inspector, noticed to be an effective motivational tool so long as it didn't cause Tezzeret to make knee-jerk decisions tactically. While Tezzeret was in command, Davin was the true strategist aboard the Sky Sovereign, the giant flying headquarters of the consulate. As a planeswalker, Davin understood there was something uniquely un about Tezzeret, information he wisely kept to himself for the time being. Through the screams and fist shaking, he worked on a plan to retake the Ether Hub, one that by his calculations, couldn't fail. The plan was relatively simple. Upon reviewing the Renegade's defenses, Davin, who always had a mind for finding flaws, discovered a way to exploit their lack of aerial defenses around the hub. He noticed this man, Gideon Jorah, was quite adept at planning and leading ground troops, but appeared lacking the same training for aerial units. This was their weakness. Yet there was still one issue, the pyromancer Chandra Nalar. The daughter of Renegade Prime could prove a variable most troubling to his operation. While they didn't have great air defenses set up yet, her fire posed a very serious and real threat. Davin realized better than almost anyone else that they were going up against several planeswalkers, not to mention the renegade forces. This would not be an easy mission, but while loss of life would almost be a certainty, there was a way. Tezzeret may not have Davin's eye for flaws, but he does understand how to get under people's skin, especially someone as passionate as Chandra. With a quick order, Chief Compliance Officer Baral was standing amongst the two planeswalkers. Baral had dealt with the Nalars in the past and has intimate knowledge of what can trigger an emotional response. Baral was ordered to work with Davin on executing a diversion which would peel Chandra and hopefully more of the planeswalkers away from the Ether Hub while the majority of their consulate forces landed from the air in skyships. Davin seemed more interested in Baral's apparent lost paperwork in regards to his first encounter with the Nalar family rather than the mission at hand, but those grievances would have to wait. Davin was instructed to bring the city back to peace and order, and with this plan, they would do just that. Back at Renegade HQ, Pia Nalar and the other senior advisors of the Rebellion hash out their next moves. The Ether Hub has provided them with essential ether needed to fuel a massive airship known as the Heart of Kirin, their only real weapon in taking down Tezzeret's control tower. For the time being, however, the initial defenses of the Hub falls upon the seasoned commander, Gideon Jura. He fears that a counterattack to retake the precious hub is inevitable, and he isn't wrong. Though something else catches his attention first, a friend who looks like they need someone to talk to. This friend is Chandra Nalar, someone who Gideon's known for a while now. Even though their first meeting was of a less than friendly manner, their experiences together through the purifying fire has forged a bond that won't easily break. Despite being reunited with her mother and fighting for the freedom of her home, Chandra can't shrug off memories of her past. Memories that caused her to shake violently at night. These were nightmares, but much more real. 
In her past, Chandra's done some pretty bad stuff, including blowing up a museum during a theft, causing the building to collapse upon the innocent visitors there. The guilt of her actions that day have been with her ever since, and on this glorious day of victory, she's unable to find solace. Luckily, the always reassuring Gideon Jora was able to help her through these trying times. Her mother is here, commanding. Chandra walked through the purifying fire and was found forgiven. She just needed to forgive herself now. Despite the harm she had caused, it was never her intent, and intent matters. The pep talk works enough that Chandra asked Gideon for a hug, something she really needed at this point. But during this, uh, strangely intimate and slightly awkward embrace, another friend walks in, the elf, Nissa Ravain. There seems to be a little love triangle going on between these three, although some may not even be aware of it. Chandra, seeing Nissa walk in, panics, trying to explain away the hug as just nothing, while Nissa goes about eating, trying not to disturb the two. Chandra is as awkward as ever trying to talk to Nissa, unable to find the words she truly wishes to speak, words Chandra herself probably isn't aware of. Needless to say, she's very self-critical how she deals with the situation. Yet, an awkward interaction isn't the most pressing issue she'll have to deal with. A man dorn in heavy consulate armor approaches the ether hub and begins to shout. The man is Baral. The plan has been set in motion, and he's been waiting for this day for a very long time. Over the years of torturing mages, including Chandra's mother, Baral's grown adept at pressing people's buttons. He always seems to know exactly what to say to get someone to lose their temper. Not like Chandra needs much help with that. The shouts were lies, but ones that weren't too far from the truth. He spoke of her as if she were a monster, which Chandra herself sometimes thought. The night her planeswalker spark ignited, so many had died and so many homes burned. It wasn't by her hand, but still, Baral had his ways of making her think that it was. The death of her father, Kieran, was solely by his hands, yet he spoke of Chandra as if she was the cause. Everything worked according to plan. Despite Gideon's orders to stay fast and defend the hub, the hot-headed Chandra wasn't about to let this malicious man escape her wrath. She jumps from the hub seeking retribution, while a worried Nissa Ravain follows Toe. Baral had peeled two powerful planeswalkers away from the hub. Now, giant gearhawks approach Gideon's position. Baral wasn't as spry as he used to be. He was old and wearing thick, sluggish armor. The heavy metal was essential to protect him against the flames of the Pyromancer, yet even so, he still had his cancellation magic to protect him. Baral is the worst type of counter mage. He always seems to have plenty of untapped islands. With his speed and agility hindered, and body less than optimal due to extensive burns from their first encounter, Baral had to rely on his wits to win this fight. He was coaxing her into a trap. Baral's direct orders were to distract the planeswalker, nothing more, but he couldn't resist the opportunity to eliminate the one who had scarred his face and body forever. His chanting of grief and guilt were working. Chandra was soon following him down dusty alleyways with nothing flammable around them. The trap is sprung. He turned to face his pursuer, fire burning in her eyes and hair alit with fury. Streams of white hot flames explode from her hands, but with a dismissive slap, Baral cancels her magic as embers fall harmlessly to the old cobblestones. Even without her fire, Chandra's fury burned. She charged at him, swinging carelessly, not fully internalizing the extent of his armor. The blows glance off just like her useless embers. Baral counters with his ether hand blade, barely missing the girl as she dodges and rolls to safety. Chandra goes back to her fire, catching Baral off guard, allowing them to make direct contact. Even without his magic, his armor protected him from most of the damage, but the heat was so intense that it managed to warp the solid steel just a bit. The smell of burnt hair and molten metal filled the air as he retreated to another alleyway, hoping to further restrict her movement. Giving chase, they face each other again, Chandra running and landing a shoulder-first tackle into Baral, but ultimately doing more harm to herself. Her arm becomes dislocated, numb, and useless. But Baral notices something that wasn't there before, a wall of thorns. Since he couldn't move further into the alley, 
he decided to take the fight to the now off-balance Chandra. A quick slice and this would all be over. Yet, as his sword swings down, his arm is stopped, a vine wrapped tightly around his thrust. An elf on the roof was aiding Chandra, Brawl calls out for aerial support. On the rooftops of Giyapur, Nissa finds herself fighting off a deranged man looking to kill her dear friend. The mud and roots of the city spring to life, forming a huge elemental waiting to answer its master's call. Baral sees this mass and calls it dirt, something which water could easily wash away. Yet, its destructive capability is on full display as it tears through automatons and thopters alike. Nissa herself enters the fray, sword in hand, dealing with whatever mechanical beast headed towards her and Chandra. This wasn't a fight Baral could win, not alone, not without a powerful gearhawk. Luckily, his retreat flew in just in time. Davin Bane arrives in the rescue thopter, which hurries Baral to safety, yet even now he can't help but antagonize the injured Chandra, again attacking her guilt. To him, the fight isn't over. He wants Davin to order a Gearhawk attack, crush them now while they have the chance. Yet that's not their mission. Davin, despite all his bureaucracy and allegiance to the consulate, has a strong sense of law and order. Their mission was to distract the planeswalkers. They succeeded. It was now time for phase two. His overall goal is to achieve peace and stability on Kaladash. All citizens are to be protected, even renegades, when at all possible. Nyssa quickly but painfully relocates Chandra's shoulder. They look over to the hub, which was currently being attacked both from the ground and sky. Their friends, her mother, all in grave danger. Brawl may have escaped, but it looked as if they were about to lose something much, much more precious. While the battle for the Aether Hub is just now reaching its climax, the war for Kaladesh is just beginning. Shanja and Baral still have unfinished business, but now both know fully where they stand. While Baral hoped to end her like he had so many mages before, he now has to contend with her powerful friends, who'll do anything in their power to protect her. The next time they meet, one will fall for good. But that's a story for another time. For now guys, if you liked the video, show your support for the Aether Hub by liking and sharing the video. I'll also be giving away a special foil card in my next lore video relating to Chandra and Baral, but I want you guys to try to guess what that card's gonna be. So go ahead and try and guess the foil giveaway in the comments below. It won't improve your chance for winning, or will it? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I'll see you next time here on the Aether Hub.